The ice is closing in now. What was I thinking? Coming to this frozen wasteland at the top of the world. Was I really gonna find him here? The man who was like a father to me. The man whose faith in numbers was equaled only by his distrust of words. Disappeared 23 years and five months ago. My old professor, Arl. I still remember the way he spoke, even though he was already unwell. If God ever spoke to us, he would sing in calculus. Words can never communicate truths. All they can do is convey opinion. And even that they do imperfectly. Let us take the three states of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. While numbers are solid, words are liquid and sometimes gas. Nothing more than hot air. <laughs> but sir, depending on temperature and pressure, Solids can melt, liquids can freeze, and gases can liquefy. Oh, oh, oh my boy. <coughs> <coughs> you fail to recognize a metaphor. Were I to announce that it was raining cats and dogs outside, would you rush to the window in anticipation of seeing tabbies and cocker spaniels falling from the sky? Your point, however, does help confirm that words are slippery and unreliable. Now, let us return to the certainty of algebra. The professor had been unnerved by my challenge. That day in question was the 23rd of May. He'd set the class a geometry problem. Paper after paper had produced wrong answers, and just as he was becoming dismayed... Aha! Finally! It was my paper that had the right answer. 23 degrees, 5 minutes. <gasps> What's this? 5 past the 23rd hour. On the 23rd of the 5th month, Two, three, and five. This is no coincidence. This is a sign. I intend to devote all my energies and what little time I have left to my research. The search for the complete unified theory? The holy grail of mathematical physics, my boy. The single equation in which all the mysteries of the world are resolved. Won't that take some time, Professor? Time is not on my side. <coughs> so I have resolved to retire from lecturing at the end of term. I can teach you nothing more. Assist me now, and who knows what the future holds for you. All through that summer, he worked tirelessly. He was convinced that the numbers two, three, and five were of great significance. It's a sequence of prime numbers. They appear everywhere. Look at your hands, my boy. Two hands, five fingers, three knuckles. Is a sign. Observe the way this plant grows. Two, two branches into three, three, which branches into five. Can you hear? The numbers are there in the rhythm and harmony of music. It's a miraculous series of numbers. It's been called the golden spire. Contained in the simplest of things right through to the largest bodies. He tried every possible permutation and combination. But when the new academic year began, he was at an impasse. Professor, you really should rest. 
Five minutes is the angle of tilt of the Earth's axis from the vertical. The very factor responsible for the seasons and the cycle of life and death on our planet. The professor contrived an extraordinary plan. At the North Pole, where the world revolves more slowly, I will build a well-insulated dwelling at the angle of 23 degrees five minutes from the vertical. These boots I have designed will ensure I remain at an angle of 23 degrees five minutes in the event I have to venture out. Don't you see, my boy? My life will be greatly prolonged by living at the pole and at an angle that compensates for the tilt of the Earth's axis. This will eliminate the seasonal factor and the consequent cycle of life and death in one move. I will have all the time and privacy required for this great work. And then he disappeared. The professor left everything he had to me. As it turned out, I was the closest thing to family he had. Years went by, and from time to time there were stories. A sighting here, a rumor there, whispers, always going further north, until finally, silence. I never forgot my debt to the professor, and my curiosity as to what became of him grew year by year. So, when I reached the age he was when he disappeared, I decided to follow in his footsteps. See if I could uncover any evidence of his passing. And that brings me to my current predicament. Plumper, perhaps. Your cheeks are looking a bit rosy from the cold, I expect. Ho, oh, ho, ho, my boy. I haven't felt the cold in a long time now. Not like you from the looks of things. Not to worry. Help is at hand. He's over here. Come on. See him. For a moment, I thought I had imagined the entire encounter. We've got you now. We would have walked right past you, but we heard your laughter. <laughs> that wasn't me laughing. 